missed an episode of your favorite podcast, choose from over a decade of content in our archives. Not just the latest episode. All free at GCNlive.com. Even the numbness in my hands is completely gone. Heart and Body Extract for a long and healthy life. Good morning, friends. Greetings. Welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we welcome your phone calls on the bright side. Our number today and every day is 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010. Try to call in early so we can get to as many calls as possible. We don't have to leave anybody on hold. If we have left you on hold in the past, tell our call screener and we'll get you first up. Or we'll put you at the head of the line anyway. Our number 844-236-6010. If you have any questions about the longevity products, about formulations, about skin care. If you want to get off your meds or, or get, get off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program like the one designed by Dr. Wallach, we can help you. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program, you can head over to my website, brightsideben.com, or you can head over to criticalhealthnews.com or pharmacistben.com. You can order products directly from the website or for a one-time $10 fee, you can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the website, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. Of course, you can also call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. All right. Welcome back to the Brightside, friends. Thanks for joining us. We're talking skin health in honor of my new Truth Treatment products. So many, so many of you have asked about the Truth Treatment products. You can find out all about it at my, on my Facebook page. That is The Truth With Ben. We update that regularly with little tidbits about skin care and skin health. If you're interested in purchasing any of the Truth Treatment products, you can purchase them off of truthtreatments.com. We're talking skin health. We'll be talking skin health here on the Bright Side for a little longer. Skin, keep in mind, uh, we've been talking about the skin as an organ. The skin is a living, throbbing, fully-fledged bodily organ, even though when you look at it, it doesn't really look like much is happening. And it's this lack of real understanding of the skin's nature as a dynamic, living, throbbing structure, an organ. Every bit is organ-like as your heart or your spleen or your liver or any other organ in the body. But the fact that it just doesn't look like anything's happening, you know, you look at your arm, nothing's really throbbing and, and, and vibrating, certainly not heart-like or spleen-like or lung-like. And it's this lack of understanding of the skin as a dynamic structure that allows us to do the crazy things we do to our skin in order to make the skin look better and allows us to do, use these silly products and listen to silly people telling us silly strategies about how to make our skin healthier and look better. What the heck does Cindy Crawford know about skin? What does a movie star know about skin? Even a plastic surgeon and dermatologist knows very little about the skin. That's why. If you go to the doctor for a skin condition, you're probably going to get the same thing that you would have gotten 50 years ago, a steroid cream or an antibiotic. This is all dermatologists have in their weaponry. 
in their, uh, in their armamentum against skin issues and against skin diseases because even dermatologists don't recognize that the skin is an organ like the heart or the liver or the lungs or the spleen. And trusting in the medical mythology about moisturizing and wrinkles and steroids and suppressing inflammation and treating skin diseases like eczema and acne and psoriasis by basically rubbing stuff on the surface to create changes in the skin's chemical and structural makeup, this is why they don't work. This is why these strategies are so useless, and this is why there's very little a doctor in the medical model or the department store model can do to address skin health issues. Last we spoke, we were talking about vitamin C, which along with vitamin A makes up what I call the dynamic duo of topical skin care vitamins. If you are using a skin health product or an anti-aging skin care product, or even if you're just using a so-called moisturizer, or really any kind of skincare product to keep your skin beautiful, attractive, healthy, young looking, and they're not featuring fatty, fatty that is, fatty vitamin C, not the cheapo, ineffective ascorbic acid form. If you're using a skincare product or skincare line or skincare products that don't feature fatty vitamin C and retinol or perhaps retinoic acid, you are really missing the boat on accessing the power of topical skin health. And you're leaving anti-aging and you're leaving upregulation of connective tissue and moisturization, true moisturization, on the table. Now, both these nutrients, vitamin A and vitamin C, are important from a dietary perspective, from an internal perspective, as well as from a topical perspective. But there's some problems associated with getting vitamin A and, for that matter, getting vitamin C into the blood through the digestive system. Mostly it's a, a problem with vitamin A. Vitamin C is pretty well handled by the digestive system. But vitamin A, there's some problems there. And keeping your vitamin A concentrations high enough is going to be somewhat difficult. Now, vitamin C, because it's water-soluble, does not present with an absorption problem, but it does present with an excretion problem. So vitamin A and vitamin C are kind of opposites. Vitamin A is stored in the body. You're not going to really excrete a lot, but you do have a little bit of an issue with absorption, especially if you're dealing with Crohn's disease or intestinal disease or gallbladder issues, or God forbid you've had a gallbladder taken out or, or a hysterectomy. All of these can compromise vitamin A absorption. Vitamin C has the opposite problem. Vitamin C, the absorption is not an issue, but because it's so readily eliminated from the body, keeping blood levels high enough to have a good effect, that can be a problem. And then there's the problem of what I call partitioning. Remember, the skin is going to be the last place that the body is delivering nutrients to if there's a deficiency. The skin is the last organ of last resort. The heart to the body, the heart is more important than the skin. The spleen is more important to the skin. The lungs and the brain and the nervous system, these are all more important to the body than the skin. And under de uh, deficiency states, the skin is going to be the last place that gets the vitamin C. Thus, the importance of topically applying both vitamin A and vitamin C. You can bypass this partitioning problem. In other words, if you're deficient in vitamin A and vitamin C and your body is partitioning the stuff to your heart, for example, or to your blood vessels or to the circulatory system, you can bypass some of that partitioning by putting the vitamin A and vitamin C directly on top of the skin. We spent a lot of time talking about vitamin A. I'm not going to talk too much more about it. I really want to get into vitamin C. Vitamin C is stupendously important for skin health. Most people know that, uh, that the name of the deficiency disease that's associated with vitamin C deficiency is called scurvy. Scurvy is the medical term for vitamin C deficiency disease. In fact, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> the technical name for vitamin C, ascorbic acid, refers to the fact that when you have enough of it, you're not going to have scurvy. Ascorbutic acid. That's the technical name. That's the real name for vitamin C. Ascorbutic acid. A meaning without, scorbutic meaning scurvy. Vitamin C is that vitamin that keeps you from getting scurvy. It's ascorbutic without scurvy. So most people know that scurvy is the disease that's caused by vitamin C deficiency. But what most people don't realize is that at least partially, scurvy manifests itself as a skin disease. At least partially, scurvy is a skin disease. Vitamin C is the final requirement. In chemistry, we say it's the rate-limiting step. It's the final requirement for the production of the body's most important anti-wrinkle fiber, something called collagen. You've all heard of collagen. And vitamin C is the most important element in the production of anti-wrinkle, wrinkle-fighting collagen. Collagen can be thought of as a, a mesh or a net 
upon which skin cells and their extrusions sit on top of. As collagen starts to break down, and if it's not being replaced, the skin can start to sink. And that's what we call a wrinkle. All right, got more to say about topical vitamin C. We come back from our break. Our number 844-236-6010. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back after this. All right, we are back on The Bright Side. Thanks for joining us, friends. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive page at brightsideben.com. If you're interested in purchasing any of the Longevity products you hear advertised on the program, recommended on the program, please head to my website's brightsideben.com or my blog, pharmacistben.com. Thank you to Robert Lundgren who set that up for me. And uh, now you can go also go over to criticalhealthnews.com, which is my new blog that I set up with George Norrie. We update both blogs regularly with news stories as well as blog posts. And, of course, you can order products directly off the website, or you can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team directly off the websites as well. You can also call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. Isn't it great to know that you can order products directly off the website, that you don't have to deal with a medical model, that you can get yourself on a nutritional supplement program and truly reduce your blood pressure, truly reduce blood fats and cholesterol, truly eliminate immune conditions and autoimmune conditions, whether you're talking arthritis or hep C or uh, multiple sclerosis, at least reduce the symptomology, if not totally eliminate many of these conditions which are related to nutritional deficiencies. If you've got questions about how to do that, we welcome your phone calls on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. Okay. So scurvy is vitamin C deficiency disease. Most people know that. But what most people don't know is that scurvy is in many ways a skin issue, a skin health issue. And that's because the connective tissue fiber that holds skin in place, that keeps skin from uh, forming wrinkles, which are basically little pits in the connective tissue where the, si- the skin sinks down into, what most people don't realize is that this is a form of scurvy in the sense that it is a collagen deficiency issue and it may very well be related to vitamin C deficiencies. No vitamin C, no collagen net, and that means skin cells and their extrusions will begin to sag and that will look like a wrinkle. Sagging skin is skin that is pitting, if you will, into little defects or little holes where collagen used to be and it's secondary to the lack of production. It follows a lack of production of collagen, which in many ways, or many times, is nothing more than a vitamin C deficiency. Now, certainly there's other causes for collagen deficiency, but one of the major causes is vitamin C deficiency, which should be understandable considering most of us aren't supplementing with vitamin C, and most of us are urinating, and if you're urinating, you're losing your vitamin C, and if you're not supplementing and replacing it on some level, it's pretty darn easy to become deficient in vitamin C. As vitamin C deficiency progresses, even more significant and troubling signs will develop. Weakness in blood vessels. Blood vessels are also largely made up of collagen. This can show up as strokes and aneurysms, as well as the development of cholesterol plaques. How do you like that? Cholesterol plaques that form in the blood vessels are really the body's attempt to patch up weak blood vessels that can be the result of nothing more than a vitamin C deficiency. Yes. Elevated blood cholesterol, cholesterol plaques and calcium deposits in blood vessels can really be nothing more than the manifestation of a vitamin C deficiency showing up as weakness in the blood vessels. The body is actually attempting to patch up broken down blood vessels. Hardened tissue and mineral deposits in the vasculature are the body's attempts to strengthen weak blood vessel walls. They're like a band-aid, if you will. Elevated cholesterol can be thought of, or blood cholesterol plaques, I should say, the, the, the sticky stuff that forms in blood vessels, can really be nothing more than the manifestation of a vitamin C deficiency. This, according to many researchers, including Dr. Matthias Rath, who's a German cardiologist, uh, who's written extensively about this phenomenon, especially in his book, Why Animals Don't Get Heart Attacks, this may be the real cause of heart disease. Vitamin C deficiency may be the cause of heart disease, or at least partially the cause of heart disease, as well as the cause of 
deposits, cholesterol deposits and calcium deposits in blood vessels. And this is also the reason why statin drugs and other boneheaded cholesterol lowering strategies, mostly drug related, are typically not very effective when it comes to preventing heart attacks. That's right, statin drugs are not very effective when it comes to protecting against heart attacks. Slightly effective and only if you're really, really sick. Tell that to the next doctor who wants to put you on a statin drug. Of course, we know that statin drugs, by artificially poisoning the cholesterol manufacturing system in the body, in the liver especially, have a whole host of toxic side effects. By the way, osteoporosis or weakening bones can also be the result of a vitamin C deficiency. Bones contain large amounts of collagen, just like the skin contains large amounts of collagen, just like blood vessels contain large amounts of collagen. And just like no vitamin C, no collagen means wrinkles, and no vitamin C, no collagen means weakened blood vessels. Same way, no vitamin C, no collagen means weak bones and osteoporosis. What osteoporosis is most certainly not is a drug issue. It's not a Fosomax issue. It's not a Boniva issue. And these drugs that they give you for osteoporosis are awful. They're way worse than, uh, you know, statin drugs aren't great, but these Fosomax type drugs, they call them bisphosphonates, are awful, awful, awful medications. And that's saying something. You know, no medications are good, but near the top of the list are the drugs they give you for osteoporosis. And again, osteoporosis is probably not a calcium deficiency issue either. And any healthcare professional, medical or alternative, who suggests taking more calcium or calcium supplements to address osteoporosis should be regarded with great skepticism. And the same goes for any doctor who wants to put you on estrogen, which is another boneheaded medical strategy for dealing with weak bones. No pun intended. Never mind the fact that estrogen is a big-time stress hormone. Never mind the fact that estrogen is associated with inflammation, immune system activation. Never mind the fact that estrogen is associated with autoimmune disease. Never mind the fact that suppression of that estrogen is associated with suppression of, of the calming and building hormone progesterone. Estrogen is a nasty, nasty substance when taken as a drug. Of course, it's a biochemical and it's necessary, but when taken as a drug, it causes tremendous problems, blood clotting, cysts, fibroids, even cancer. Never mind the fact that you have all of these toxicities that are associated with estrogen supplementation. The fact of the matter is, is osteoporosis can be something, it can be caused by something as mild as something as seemingly trivial as vitamin C deficiency. Simply getting on a vitamin C supplement, of course, your Beyond Tangy Tangerine is absolutely packed with vitamin C. It can go a long way towards making your bones stronger without any of the toxicity that's associated with estrogen. And of course, as far as skin goes, aging skin has a lot in common with weakening bones. These two conditions are often found together. I can always tell by looking at a person's skin, and for that matter, their body type, if they are at risk for osteoporosis. And the same should be true for all healthcare practitioners and patients as well. If you notice that your skin is thinning, thinning if you notice your skin is starting to get crepey, as, and if you notice that um, somebody has a thin body type, these are all indicators that bones are prone towards weakening. And for that matter, it also means that the circulatory system may be weakening as well. Thin, thinning skin, wrinkly skin, crepey skin, a thin body type are all associated with osteoporosis and perhaps even circulatory, sy circulatory system issues as well. And that's because without enough vitamin C around, scorbutic or scurvy conditions can develop. Collagen synthesis is going to be impaired throughout the body. That includes weakening bones. That includes wrinkles in your skin. That includes blood vessel problems as well. And by the way, there's a really interesting relationship between vitamin C levels in the blood, how much vitamin C you're getting through foods and supplements, and dry skin as well. And to understand that, we got to understand the nature of the skin as a layered structure. We'll talk about that tomorrow. On the bright side, we're coming back with your phone calls. 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll be back right after this. On the bright side, I'm Pharmacist Ben. If you've got a health condition or if you're on prescription drugs and you want to get off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, let us show you how simple and how easy it is to reverse any chronic long-term degenerative disease issue. The nature of the body is to heal. The nature of the body is to be healthy and whole. If that's not happening, something's missing, something's wrong, there's something we're doing in terms of a lifestyle issue, behavioral issue, something we're doing. 
And that's such good news because it means we don't need a medical model for our degenerative health crises. We don't need a prescription drug for our degenerative health diseases, for our degenerative diseases. We don't need the doctor or the medical model. We simply need some common sense, some better lifestyle strategies, and certainly a nutritional supplement program. Let us show you how easy it can be. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010 is our number. And by the way, this is especially true about the skin because of the skin's nature as a dynamic system. The skin is the most dynamic system in the body. It's constantly, re along with the digestive tract, it's con which, by the way, it has a lot in common with. The cells of the digestive tract are kind of like the skin inside out and vice versa. The skin is sort of like the digestive tract inside out as well. Digestive symptoms, digestive symptomology, digestive health conditions, and skin symptoms and skin diseases are the most reversible of all degenerative health diseases. Let us show you how easy it can be to reverse your skin condition, your digestive health condition, whatever your chronic degenerative health disease is, chronic degenerative disease is, 844-236-6010 is our number. Jessica in Michigan, what's up? Welcome to the Bright Side. Hey, Ben. So good, good to talk to you. Same. What's up? We love you. Um, oh, thank I'm you. Calling for my, I'm calling on behalf of my boyfriend. Um, he's had, well, what we think might be something like seborrheic keratosis. He's had uh -huh. it since he was real young. Okay. And makes perfect sense because he, you know, he doesn't like to eat a lot of vegetables and works What's long problem? hours, doesn't sleep a lot. He's you, you want a trick for eating vegetables? You want a trick for making veggies delicious? Here's a trick. Even even kids will even kids love this. When you uh -huh. heat your vegetables, you release the sugar. And when you uh -huh. put spices and salt on top of them and then oil or some kind of butter or coconut oil, they become irresistible. Even a salad, even just a plain old salad with spices and oil on it is unbelievably tasty. You did not eat that stuff. Did you put did you put oil and salt or oil and spices on top of it? You know, he loves butter, and I've been putting a lot of butter on all my vegetables. I love it, but he'll, he'll he he doesn't like, like he doesn't like butter and bro steamed broccoli with butter and salt. And you, broccoli is at the top of the list. No way. No way. Steamed with butter and salt. He won't do it. Have so, you tried it, but with butter or coconut oil and salt? Uh, <laughs> no, I don't think you tried it. Even kids like that. He will not do it. Did you, so, did you, no, no, hang on though. Did you, uh, uh -huh. I'll answer your question in a second, but I want to know. Uh -huh. Did you steam the broccoli with butter or coconut oil and salt? And then he said no, or he tried it he and didn't like it? He won't even try it. He won't wow. Try it. Okay. Well, if he won't try it, then I you can't do anything. He's really stubborn, you know, he's, he's right. been, he feels that he's healthy. He's never called in sick a whole day in, you know, a day in his life, you know, really? never been school. He thinks that he's like a robot and he doesn't have to. Supplement or to well, what's with the what's with the seborrhea and the keratosis if he's Mr. Healthy Guy? Well, he's had it since he was young, and he told me, you know, that they tried to like burn it off. Uh, which <laughs> Wait a minute, they course. tried to burn off. Right, they tried to when burn off the keratosis. Yeah. Un unbelievable. All right, let me answer your question because it's very easy to deal with this. Now, uh -huh. theoretically, it's very easy to deal with it. You sound like you got a stubborn boyfriend there, so it may not be so theory. easy for him. But yeah. in theory, for the listeners who may be dealing but with he this problem. You. He'll listen to you. That's well, why. where is he? Put him on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me, let me address the problem. I, I got a bunch of calls here. It's very uh -huh. easy to deal with. Seborrhea just means a lot of sebum, a lot of uh -huh. skin oil. Keratosis uh -huh. means that the skin cells are growing out of control. So you got two elements here. You've got lots of skin oil, and you've got uh, skin cells dividing out of control. So let's take the seborrhea first, the sebum, the oil. When you have excessive amounts of oil, what you have is the manifestation of a body in distress. This is very simple because it's the same thing as all diseases, really, but the body will secrete skin oil when it feels like its life is threatened. And this is kind of a neat little mechanism. One of the ways, when the body feels like its life is being threatened, and this can happen whether you have a, if you have a, a digestive condition or, a di or blood sugar condition, or if it's really being threatened by a lion or a tiger back in the African savanna 100,000 years ago, it would slime itself. The body would, would coat itself with oil so that when the lion tried to eat you, it wouldn't be, it would slip. It would be harder for the lion to grip you. So the uh -huh. secretion of oils is one of the ways the body protects itself. So A, mm -hmm. seborrhea is a sign that your, your husband or your boyfriend, no matter how healthy he thinks he is, his body doesn't have the same opinion. His body yeah. thinks it's about to be eaten by a tiger and it's secreting oils in order to protect itself. That's step number that one. 
Yeah. Step number two is the keratosis. Now, this is a little bit trickier to understand because we don't often look, we don't typically look at the skin as being composed of a bunch of cells, a bunch of little tiny animals. Keratosis is a sign that the cells are dividing out of control and they're secreting lots of this kind of protein, this hard protein. Keratin is like a rhinoceros horn or a deer antler or a toenail or a fingernail. It's a very hard protein, but when it's, when the body is, uh, for some reason, it's, there's a nutritional deficiency or there's microscopic inflammation, the cells will go out of grow out of control and they'll secrete lots of these proteins. So basically, you got a body that's in distress. What do you do? Number one, first and foremost, you got to focus on the, number, the major cause of distress, which is going to be digestive distress. Usually, ser ser uh, seborrhea and keratoses are associated with problems with fat metabolism. That means either processing fats through the digestive system or perhaps not getting enough fats through the digestive system. So see if he can see if he notices that he has any problems with specific foods. A food diary is always the first thing to look at, especially right. fatty foods, especially uh, 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 oily foods, fish and avocados or french fries or any kind of fried foods. If he has problems with those kinds of foods, most certainly he's dealing with a gallbladder or intestinal issue, possibly even a liver issue. Now, you, gave, you said something very important important uh, and that is that he's had this since he was a little kid so what you want to do that usually means that there's been a digestive condition percolating along for many years usually a milk allergy dairy allergy it could involve gluten or it could involve grains so food diary and eliminating problem foods focusing especially on milk dairy cheese and other fatty foods then there's going to be nutritional supplements for the fatty system get him on the bioluminightly essence and I'm, I'm assuming here he's going to be easy to deal with but I'm also talking to other listeners who may you know that's an assumption of course but and he may not be but there's other listeners who are who are tuning in who may have the same problem focus on uh, fats and fat metabolism that is a food diary and eliminating fatty foods that are causing problems and then start to support the fat digestive system with the bioluminightly essence the fucoid z ultimate enzymes after meals especially fatty meals and use a little bit of apple cider vinegar with them you can actually by the way use apple cider vinegar topically right on the seborrhea that will help dissolve some of the sebum and will also dissolve help dissolve some of the keratin that's causing the keratosis and then uh, also the healthy start pack the fucoid z might be helpful also for the digestive system uh, for the fat metabolizing system then you want to make sure he's using his fatty nutrients he'll get uh, the ultimate efas he'll get his ultimate EFAs EFAs in the Healthy Start Pack, so you definitely want them on that. But I'd be throwing in 20,000 IU of vitamin A, maybe 400 IU of vitamin E, uh, toss in the ultimate selenium, which can also be important for the fat metabolizing part of the body. That is 200 to 400 micrograms a day. Uh, NAC and acetylcysteine may help, especially if there's some liver involvement, which there very well might be. I'd be using maybe 400, 200 to 400 milligrams of uh, of uh, uh, NAC and then there's one more very important nutrient it's a mineral I'll tell you what that is when we come back from our break but it's super mega important for all skin health issues especially keratosis so hang tight and we'll tell you what that is when we come back from our break I'm pharmacist Ben if you're on cold, if you're on hold hang on we'll get to you when we come back as well all right we're back on the bright side 844-236-6010 is our number we're talking to Jessica in Michigan Jessica fats fat metabolism digestive system uh, work on the digestive system, all the things we just talked about, digestive enzymes, apple cider vinegar, which you can use topically, as we said. Biolumin nightly essence. Please don't underestimate the importance of the connection between probiotics, that is good bacteria, and fats and fat metabolism. And that includes fatty vitamins and uh, also uh, the way the body processes and breaks down dietary fats, also hormones for that matter. So the Biolumin nightly essence, fermented foods can help as well. Uh, supplementally, vitamin A, 20,000 IU a day, very, very very important. You might throw in some vitamin C also, vitamin C supplements. You'll get those in the Healthy Start Pack along with your ultimate EFAs. Uh, and then NAC, as we said, also vitamin E can help. And then there's a really, uh, selenium also is important. And then there's a really important mineral for all seborrhea conditions, for all acne conditions, for all skin conditions, including eczema, including psoriasis, just having healthy skin for sun protection, for anti-aging. And that is a mineral that we're going to talk about uh, hopefully tomorrow, if not tomorrow, the next day. And that's zinc. 
mega important for all skin health issues. Zinc is stored in the skin. Zinc is involved in the production of collagen. Zinc is major, major, majorly anti-aging, and it's also important for all skin diseases, including seborrheic keratosis. Use zinc picolinate. That's the best form of uh, supplemental zinc, 50 milligrams a day. And you can also use topical zinc to get some relief. Uh, zinc oxide is a great way to uh, get yourself some topical zinc. You can also use, believe it or not, and we'll talk about this also tomorrow and the next day, calamine lotion, which is a zinc solution, at least partially made up of zinc. Um, we'll talk about that. Uh, we'll talk about that probably, uh, if not tomorrow, the next day. Uh, calamine lotion, of course, has the downside of being a little bit pink. Uh, so you don't want to use too much of it. Or you can put a couple drops of calamine lotion into uh, a zinc oxide paste or into some other moisturizing or typical standard standard uh, skincare product, and you'll get the benefit of the zinc that way as well. It's not a topical condition, but you can do a lot for drying up uh, excessive skin oils and helping stabilize the growth of cells. Last but not least, using some clay can also help dry up uh, some of those some of that sebum, some of that oil production. Uh, and then one more thing, and I'll let you say, I know it sounds like you want to say something, one more Thing. I love, 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 love vitamin B5 for all excessive sebum conditions. Pantothenic acid, you do need high doses of it, uh, five grams a day, uh, maybe anywhere from one to five grams a day of pantothenic acid, vitamin B5. Make sure you're using it with your Beyond Tangy Tangerine. You never want to take one B vitamin in high doses unless you've got all the B vitamins present. Uh, go ahead, ma'am. I'm sorry. What were you going to say? No, that's all oh, that is great. Um, just that was a good time to ask. Okay, so I bought zinc, but not the colonate. I think it was before I listened to you, and I... So useless, or... Uh, not useless. Out? Not useless, Use necessarily. I don't know. I, I just... Most people get a little upset stomach from that form of zinc. It's a little bit more... You don't get the, the absorption into the bloodstream from the digestive tract is not as effective. Uh, if you want to upregulate or, or increase the uh, absorption of zinc from the digestive system, make sure you take your zinc with food, especially fatty food. There's an important relationship between bile uh, bile secretion and also uh, and uh, mineral absorption and that includes selenium and he may very well have a problem with bile or with fat absorption so any if you t if he does take his zinc sulfate or zinc gluconate what I call cheapo zinc uh, make sure he takes them with food so he gets a big mm -hmm. gets a bump in bile secretion anything else thank you for spending so much time okay God bless it. you good luck Jessica All say right, hi to your welcome. boyfriend for thank me. you Thanks. Okay, bye-bye. All right, Shane in North Carolina, what's up? Welcome to the Bright Side. Yeah, so uh, what can be done about skin tags? Skin tags, classic sign of diabetes or pre-diabetes associated with problems with blood sugar. So uh, topically, if you want to get rid of a skin tag, get yourself some 70%, 70% glycolic acid, and then... Uh, to make a little donut around the skin tag with some uh, some of my omega-6 healing cream if you can get that off truthtreatments.com uh, if you want to use just plain vaseline that's not as effective but something to create a donut to protect the soft skin from uh, the glycolic acid get a 70 percent glycolic acid solution you get that at the pharmacy or alternatively an 88 percent lactic acid solution again you'll get that from the pharmacy uh, your pharmacist can put it in a little bottle for you uh, or you can get it off the internet these days and then you make a donut with your vitamin c your omega-6 healing cream or your your vaseline we're, we're going to talk about vaseline tomorrow too by the way uh, and then you make a little donut with uh, so the skin tag protrudes through the donut and then dab the glycolic acid or the lactic acid on top of the skin tag uh, making sure you're protecting the good skin because you'll get a little burn if you don't uh, and then you do it two or three times a skin tag depending on how how strong it is how how robust it is will fall off however please regard skin tags as a sign that the blood sugar is starting to become messed up and that means do all of your blood sugar stabilizing strategies number one the sweeties from longevity Number two, the Healthy Start Pack, again, from Longevity. Number three, keeping your intake of fast-burning sugars down, uh, breads, pastas, and rice, and potatoes, and fruit juice, and desserts, etc. cetera. Uh, and then also making sure that you're getting high doses of the B vitamins, especially niacin, which is mega, mega important for blood sugar control. You'll get that in the Healthy Start Pack. But it wouldn't hurt you to throw in a little bit of timed-release niacin, maybe 100 milligrams a day, to take 
exactly. You're a healthy striker. I'm going to let you go there, Shane, because we've got some background noise. Treat, uh, treat skin tags as a sign of pre-diabetes. Use all your diabetic strategies. For weaning yourself off of carbohydrates, I know I said this before. I'll say it again. For weaning yourself off of the foods we love and that we're addicted to, the breads and the pastas and the desserts, more protein, more coconut oil. In fact, using protein and coconut oil every time you're craving your sweets or your breads or your pastas is a great way to wean yourself off of, off of those uh, hard to wean off of foods. And also, you'll find that if you eat salty food or if you drink salt water, uh, you can get Celtic sea salt and put it right in salt water, you'll find that that'll take away your craving for sweets as well. Just salt can do that. Um, I use a vegetable juice. I, I make uh, vegetable juices I make a beet and, and celery, and sometimes I'll put cucumber or sprouts in my Vitamix with water, and then I throw lots of salt in there, so I make a nice salty drink, and I'll tell you, that'll kill a sugar craving or a sweet craving like nobody's business. So treat skin tags as a diabetic issue, pre-diabetic issue. You can treat it topically, as I say, with lactic or salicylic acid, but they're just going to keep sprouting back, so you really want to treat it as a biochemical issue, mostly involving blood sugar. Thanks for your call. Appreciate it. All right, got a couple more minutes. Wes in Idaho. What's up? How you doing? Yeah, pretty good. Uh, ben, I've got a bottle of vitamin K2 here. Okay. Uh, uh, comes from MK7, okay. NATO. NATO. With NATO. Uh-huh. Uh, 120 caps. Each cap is 100 micrograms. That's 125% uh, daily uh, recommended. Now, you're recommending uh, 5 what? Lot, yeah, lots more than that. That's going to be a little pricey for you. I've, I'd find another one. 100 micrograms is very little vitamin K. Uh, vitamin oh. K is one of the trickier ones, though. You don't want to take just vitamin K without vitamin A and D and E, all your fat-soluble vitamins. It's probably a good idea to make sure you're getting some sunshine. And also, fermented foods and probiotics are another really important strategy for bumping up your vitamin K levels. Uh, probiotics and fermented foods, too. Uh, probiotics, especially good bacteria, make vitamin K and they make vitamin K as they're munching down on fiber. So using fermented veggies and making sure you're getting enough fiber in addition to your bioluminightly essence is a great way to make sure that you're making enough vitamin K. And then supplementing, I do recommend a little bit more. Uh, I personally take 5,000 micrograms, which would be 50 times. That would be 50 of those tablets. Yeah. So that would be a lot. But you can find a 5,000 5, microgram. I buy a 5,000 microgram product. I forgot who I'm getting it from. I'll have to tell you that tomorrow. Um, but you can, you can find them. I buy it just at the vitamin store. So th they're available. And there's really no toxicity associated with vitamin K, although you do want to make sure you're taking it with all your fat-soluble vitamins. Does that help you? Yeah. Can I also get you to comment on the germ theory of Louis Pasteur versus well, Antoine Bichamp? Versus what? Uh, Antoine. Oh, Antoine Bichamp. Yes, yeah, that was a big. That's an interesting story. I think I might have talked about it in the past. There was a back in the 1800s when we didn't really know what germs were. There was a there was a debate in the medical world between two guys, two famous scientists, Louis Pasteur, who studied germs. That was his thing. Ferment. Actually, he studied fermentation. He studied beer. Is really where he, what he studied. He was. I think. I don't know if he was a beer maker or he was just a uh, beer scientist. Wine but as well. What's that? Uh he was involved, uh, some of his findings affected the wine industry yeah. to get yeah. it more, yeah, he, more uh, table life or, or shelf life. Yeah, he was interested in studying uh, the, how, the fermentation process, and he was the guy who first discovered germs. But his competition uh, was a guy named Antoine Bouchamp, and Bouchamp said it's not the germs, it's the environment that the germs live in that is what causes disease. And there was this big battle that went on. Uh, at the end of his life, Louis Pasteur actually admitted that Bouchamp was right, and it wasn't the germs as much as it was the environment that the germs lived in, namely the bodily environment. And this is something that we talk about here on the Bright Side all the time. It's about the context, the environment that the disease shows up in. Change the environment and you will change the disease. Thanks for your call. Appreciate it. Wes, sorry if we left you on hold. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening, friends. You can call back tomorrow, by the way, if we left you on hold. Tell our call screener that you're on hold and we'll get you first up. That's all the time we have for today. Check out my website, truthtreatments.com if you're interested in purchase, purchasing any of the truth products or also brightsideben.com or pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com if you're interested in joining the Bright Side Ben team or purchasing any longevity products. Take care, folks. Have a wonderful, beautiful day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now. Virtually 